Well, it's an event that's created a lot of buzz among local churches and Christian groups. The largest public satanic ceremony in history happening right here in Detroit. The unveiling here in Detroit is historic. The Satan statue has never before been seen publicly. Bronze statue of a goat-headed Satan. It just seemed like it would be a historic event. Tonight and what the temple is doing, this is a celebration of true religious freedom. It's here, it's in Detroit, and this is fantastic. Protesters took the heavy rainfall as some sort of sun. So for them to come out and want to make a statement that all of this is horrible, it's rotten, it's, they, they don't, I feel sorry for them. I really, really feel sorry for them. United Airlines is inspecting a plane this morning to find out what made a number of passengers sick. Firefighters described whatever happened as a chain reaction that left as many as 20 of the 156 people on board feeling ill. And so far, there's no explanation as to why. They've got several sick passengers, uh, six passengers have passed out, several more are ill. Uh, some men, adult men, that were visibly shaken. And the man directly behind me started passing out, and then other people started passing out, and there was people vomiting and dizzy. We're still not sure the nature of what exactly happened, but the people that were feeling well, uh, poorly are feeling better now that they're all on oxygen. Good afternoon. More areas of New Mexico are underwater. During this, the rainiest early July the state has seen in years. People in Torrance County say it is the worst flooding they have ever seen. This is what I'm talking about. This building was actually ripped from its foundation. These massive trees just split in half. The rains came very quickly. And so did the flooding. It's something workers here say is devastating to see. We have torrential rains, but we've never, in the, the history of the ranch, people have been coming here. This is our 60th anniversary, and people have been coming here for 60 years. Uh, they have never seen anything like this before. So Northern Kentucky really saw some of the worst damage today that we've seen so far. Can't do anything about acts of God, that's for sure. This morning, at least six people are still missing in Kentucky after violent flooding. Two people died from the rushing water. Indiana and Illinois are also dealing with severe weather. A violent line of storms pummeling its way through the Midwest has washed away homes and shattered communities here in Kentucky. Oh my God! Days of torrential rainfall have left people here struggling to regroup. Josh Hitchcock shot this video of a house slamming into a bridge. Moments after he watched the raging waters of Big Mud Lick take his own home. Where was your house? It was right there. Right there? Mm -hmm. And where did it end up? It ended up all the way down there. About 125 feet away. Yeah. He said it happened in a matter of seconds. It's never been like this, never, never gotten this bad to where it's been flooded. And it wasn't just storms. Blazing temperatures causing heat exhaustion for 300 people at a Luke Bryan concert in Nashville, sending 15 to the hospital. Fire fully engulfing this Pentecostal church in Indiana. It sounded almost like a sonic boom. It was thundering and storming, and I thought the lightning must have struck really close. A lot going on with weather and a couple of dangerous days ahead. And next to that raging wildfire in California, leaping onto a highway like a scene from a disaster movie, Take a look at this. Drivers trapped on the road at rush hour, many abandoning their cars. More than a dozen vehicles caught fire and were destroyed when a wildfire jumped the main road to Las Vegas. Some make it through. Oh my God. I can feel the heat. 17 year old Talia Sclafani took this photo as she ran to safety. But the fire continued to burn into nearby brush into the evening hours, burning structures and forcing evacuations. Lightning storm sparking new fires here in California tonight. As the sun set, the nearby pine fire blowing up. Hundreds of campers, including these Girl Scouts, evacuated. And in Washington state, where lightning has already sparked fires this summer, hundreds forced from their homes today. The record number of wildfires in Saskatchewan has forced the Canadian military to step in. Over 122 fires are still burning, and some of them have grown to be the size of major cities. This morning, hundreds of firefighters are battling a fast-moving wildfire near California's famed Napa Valley. A building burned overnight near Lake Berryessa, close to where the fire started. Flames and smoke so thick they blocked out the sun. We got trailers involved at this 
time the wind shifted. What started as a brush fire exploded fast. It is one of nine active wildfires burning in California. Billowing smoke and crackling flames created an orange and black backdrop for tankers fighting the massive fire. Animals in this rural area fled the flames. There are at least 20 large wildfires now burning in the west. In Montana's Glacier National Park, flames have torn through the dry mountains, forcing one family to quickly escape. Yeah, oh my gosh, go. Okay, Larry, we need go, to go now, go. 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 Like, yeah, no, go. fast, Dad, go. Here in California, there is a lot of scorched earth, but you can hear those helicopters above. We just grab the things that were important to us, our, uh, our dog, you know, the rest is in God's hands. California is under a state of emergency tonight. The number of wildfires sparked by a historic drought is growing. They're raging from north of San Francisco all the way to the Mexican border. One firefighter is dead, and the flames have also destroyed homes and forced hundreds to seek safety. We're lucky to be alive, teetering over that bridge. In fact, we're told tonight 30 miles of bridges throughout the storm zone being inspected tonight, possibly weakened by the storms. In Moreno, California, streets turned into rivers, incredible pictures. And in Wickenburg, Arizona, that is a pool right there in the backyard, surrounded by the rushing waters. Torrential rains and flash floods swamping the drought-ridden southwest. The street is flooding. All part of a series of storms that were very strong and very rare. In Southern California, it caused flash floods, turning streets into fast-moving rivers, forcing road closures yeah! and leaving drivers stuck. This parking lot has now become a river. In California, nearly seven inches of rain in just a few hours washing away that bridge. The main conduit between Los Angeles and Phoenix wiped away. This pickup truck careening into the watery chasm. Its driver, injured, was plucked to safety. It's really raining, though. And the wet weather also took out the ball game. The Angels were rained out at home Sunday night for the first time in 20 years. July is normally the driest month of the year in Southern California. More than a quarter inch of rain fell in downtown Los Angeles Saturday, breaking a nearly 220-year-old record. Earthquakes over in the East Bay, Fremont, the spot uh, that seemed to get rattled the most. The strongest of those quakes, a magnitude of four. It felt like somebody just picked up my house, shook it, and then dropped it again. We just don't feel a lot of rumbling around the Hayward Fault. Very unusual. Again, a 4.0 at 241 this morning in Fremont. There's no damage to report after a 4.2 earthquake hit the Inland Empire early this morning. The epicenter was in Fontana. Security camera video from inside an AMPM on top of the earthquake's epicenter shows the moment the ground started sh The magnitude 4.2 earthquake hit at 5.54 in the morning. Three smaller aftershocks hit shortly after. This morning, more than a dozen earthquakes have rattled Alaska's Aleutian Islands. At last check, there have been 18 just since 5.30 yesterday. Most have been between the mid-3 and mid-5 magnitude range. But one just before 10 o'clock our time last night was a 6.9. They are all centered in the same area, about 2,200 miles west of Seattle. Earthquake has rocked Indonesia's easternmost province of Papua. The U.S. Geological Survey says that quake was centered about 150 miles west of Jayapura, the provincial capital of Papua. Iran's president said this morning that his country will no longer be called a threat to the world. Iranians may be happy with this agreement, but other countries in the region say they're not so sure. Israel's calling the deal a disaster. We have negotiated a deal that is good for the United States, it's good for Israel, it's good for world peace and security. Remarkable video to show you now as flash flooding sweeps through a village in Iran. This is in northern Iran and the rushing water collapses homes right in front of us here. Look at this. It's been a devastating 36 hours. The worst of the flooding happened in the provinces of Tehran, Kazvin and Arborz to the east of the capital Tehran from where these pictures emerge showing the dramatic scenes in Zirab on Monday. Video footage shows infrastructure falling down and being washed away in the flooded streets.
We're back with what officials say may be the most dangerous eruption in decades in Mexico. A volcano has been blasting lava and ash into the air since late last week, blotting out the sky. It's like a fireball rolling down the hill. The volcano was throwing fire through the air. I couldn't believe it. Coating cars, homes, and lives, the blanket of ash has forced 700 to flee. There's hope for thousands of Australian tourists stuck in Bali. The first flights out of Perth began taking off today. Garuda and AirAsia were the first to give the go-ahead. Jetstar followed later. But Virgin is waiting for pilots to see for themselves if the flight path is safe to avoid a cloud of volcanic ash. Locals on the remote island where part of a plane wing washed ashore say the debris was there for months before authorities were alerted. MH370 investigators confirmed the plane part is from a Boeing 777. A volcano has erupted on the remote Indian Ocean island of Reunion, the same island where part of an aircraft wing thought to belong to the missing Boeing 777 of Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 was found on Wednesday. been rocked by its biggest earthquake in almost 100 years. The magnitude 5.7 hit this afternoon. Queensland's largest earthquake in nearly a century. At 1.38 this afternoon, 100 to 110 kilometres off Fraser Island, it struck. A magnitude 5.7, much stronger than the 5.3 just two days ago. The tremor sparked evacuations and damage to some homes. It's our second quake this year, measuring above five on the Richter scale. Seen out of a scary movie. Millions of mayflies gathered on a bridge in Cibula, Iowa, forcing the Department of Transportation to shut the bridge down over the weekend. You might want to get uh, DOT out here at the shad flies. It's like ice on this bridge. A video posted online shows a police officer calling for backup before stepping out into the cloud of mayflies, many of which rushed into the vehicle. I've lived in Cibula since 75. I've never ever seen that many before ever. like a scene from a horror movie as swarms of locusts appeared in southern Russia this week. The temperature is rising, records are falling, especially in the West where this July has been one of the hottest ever. I've never seen flames so tall, uh, 200, 300 foot flames. Stephen Gillardi said the wind shifted and within minutes the fire began to bear down on his ranch. Gillardi watched as crews tried to save his property. The British government has been questioned over a secret plan to deploy heavily armed troops on the streets in the event of a terror attack. Jones, who sits on London's Police and Crime Committee, called the revelation shocking.